What's up, guys? Rob here from Real Live Entertainment. I'm hanging out here at the Troubadour with Faulkner. How are you guys, man? Good, man. How are well, you? Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Uh, I'm doing great. Um, it's hot out there, though. I hate it. Yeah, I've, I've lived in L.A. all my life, but this is I can't get used to it. <laughs> you know, we'll, it'll be uh, hotter tonight once we get on stage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for I sure. Hear that. Yeah, I we'll hear burn that. it up. <laughs> Let's talk about music. The debut EP, uh, which dropped last year. Um, you guys, it's interesting. Um, who you guys produced with? RZA. And this was at Rick Rubin's studio. Um, what was this experience like for you guys as a, as a fresh new artist? Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, so Rick Rubin has a studio in Malibu. It's called Shangri-La. Mm -hmm. And Bob Dylan's tour bus is in the back. Like Eminem's A Lemon Tree is there. Yeah. And just like it has so much history and culture. And we were fortunate enough for RZA to bring us all there and to produce New York Anthem and the EP. Right. And going into the studio with him, um, what what did you guys get out of that? What did you guys learn um, from being in the studio with such a legend like RZA? Well, uh, the man is is one of the most intelligent human beings we've, we've ever met. Um, he dropped a ton of wisdom on us. Um, he is well versed in everything from music to math to philosophy to history, and he incorporates every single one of those into uh, the art that he's making. Um, so it was, it was a great honor, and um, he definitely um, helped us out a lot. So as you guys were creating the debut EP, um, what was what was that like for you guys? How did you guys come together to write the five tracks that are on the EP? It was really a spontaneous live kind of process. Like we tracked the rhythm sections live mostly, okay. and it was a lot of just playing in the room together, kind of old school. Um, but then we really are big fans of electronic music and um, EDM even and stuff. So we added that on top of like live tracks, right. and so it added a really interesting blend. What inspired you guys to do the live tracking? Uh, not a lot of bands do it nowadays, um, but when I the bands that do do it, I mean, they always seem to enjoy it. Um, so, what really inspired you guys to do that? It just feels better, um, you know, as a musicians to 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 track it live. Uh, that's one. Two. One of our producers, JP Bowersock, um, that did the uh, first couple Strokes albums and worked with Ryan Adams extensively. Uh, he's a big fan of, of tracking rhythm sections live and he loves the grittiness of it. Like even if there's, you know, a little hiccup here and there, he doesn't care. He wants it. He wants it in there. So um, for him, it was essential that at least that part of the band gets gets tracked live. Also, it makes studios more affordable because you get in out faster. <laughs> So when you guys are tracking live and then you guys go to do your live shows like tonight, um, does it change much since you guys recorded it as, as a live version or is it the same as if it was recorded like any other band and then you guys change it up for the live show? We hope it changes for the better, not the worse, number one. Um, and yeah, it's, it's always different. You know, we always try to shake it up. We have different melody lines sometimes and yeah, keep it different. You guys have like a hip hop feel um, with your records, like not not that you sound like hip hop, but it's like a hip hop artist fits perfectly with your music. Um, and you guys have worked with two hip hop artists, RZA being one of them, and, and then Royce recently uh, on a track that you guys recently dropped. Um, what is it? What is it about hip hop that you got that caught your guys' attention? And how do you guys feel hip hop goes or blends into rock? Well, for me, hip hop took over where punk left off. Okay. Um, it's the culture in general uh, that that you know starting from nothing, starting from scratch, and building something uh, bigger than than yourself. Um, and I agree with Lucas; it, it picked up where punk left off for what sure. About you guys? I mean, I grew up listening to Thirty Six Chambers and like Grizz's early stuff, and you can kind of feel how raw it is, you know, and how he kind of made it. it sounds like on some kind of a track, you know, and just built this like beautiful thing from these small rough raw elements so he's still like that too in the studio right. I love the beats I love adding like loops to, to, to the songs too yeah. now when is that is that something we can expect for the music that you guys continue to write you guys are gonna make it somewhat fit with hip-hop artists if you guys were to do any more features yeah, I think it's gonna be very rhythm, rhythm based. So yeah, that'd be consistent with what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you guys, as you guys first got together to create Faulkner, um, what is it about this genre that you guys wanted to pursue this kind of sound um, for your band? W for us, it's just we're all very different people, all four of us, uh -huh. and so it wasn't a premeditated thing at all. We were just bringing our pieces to. Um, to what we were doing and every single one of us has such different tastes we're different individuals and so right. that was just a natural progression of that and uh talking about the track that you guys recently released with uh 
Royce, um, did you guys get to go in the studio with him or is that something that happened um, at a separate time? No, that one was uh, remote collaboration, which made it even more interesting. Yeah. What was he, that like? He was in like Detroit and uh, <laughs> yeah, so it was, it was on a song that we had already finished and then he just took it to like another kind of place, you know. There's like the version that we had played of that song before his verse was on there. Right. And then it made it more so much, you know, better and more interesting to add to add him into the mix, you know. Definitely took it to a whole nother level. Right. That that's what's so awesome too about social media now is you can just like tag someone or something and then it turns into a collaboration and then you're on your next single and there's a lot of really random things happening right now online that turn into collabs and albums right. and tours and so forth and w we love it so and especially as as new artists you guys are working on your debut out or ep and then like opportunities like that just come around the corner that's pretty cool um now speaking of debut initially i want to say i read that you guys were working on a debut album and then it turned out to ep is that correct yeah the album's dropping this year okay <laughs> what made you change your mind about dropping the ep first um, you know, you got to hold a little bit back, you know, <laughs> you can't just give it all to the people all at once. So. And, th and then the five tracks that are on the EP, like why did you guys feel um, they were the ones to release to the audience for the first time? Um, it wasn't um, it wasn't that it was like a random selection or anything like that. It, we just felt that at the time those were um, not necessarily our strongest tracks, but what would represent us the best uh, coming right out the gate. Within this last year, how do you guys feel you've progressed as writers, as musicians, um, now that you're working on the new album? Um, it's the music. The music is a lot more structurally consistent with pop songs. Okay. Um, and some of our previous stuff was very consistent with like punk um, type of uh, structure. So the structure is a lot more accessible and doesn't really have a home on one genre. Like it could easily collaborate with a hip hop artist play on an alternative rock station right. and go to a pop station. So um, it's different in that respect that it's kind of genre agnostic. Now on, on uh, the EP, there was, I think it was the last track, Water, um, Waters, are Waters Are Rising. Who was, who was doing the grunge voice? Um, it sounded, <laughs> I, I really. Which one, one the, the, the na -na 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 or the actual? No, like the, 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 the you sing like, the yeah. Oh, that's was it really? Oh, yeah, yeah, it sounded completely like I could have sworn it was like some old school punk rocker oh, sure. that actually what are sang you in saying there. exactly. Are you saying you thought I would have like a girl voice? Well, no, I just like <laughs> listening to it. I was like, wait, is this like an old school punk rock band that like or featured this on this? In the red jacket. How could it <laughs> be? Yeah, what did I just get myself into? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I love the I love that grungy voice on that on that track. It's, yeah, thanks. Yeah, a yeah. lot of cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That is the key. <laughs> so what else can we expect for you guys? Uh, there's a show here tonight at the Troubadour. What else is happening for Faulkner uh, this year? We have some new material that's probably the most I've ever been excited about new material. So really excited to release that this year.